Hello everyone and welcome back to Space Engineers. I'm your host Val Death and we're going through the tutorial series. This episode, the last tutorial, number 10, grids, merge blocks, and object grids. Uh, we'll learn how to, the nature of grids, the rules that govern them, how you can join them with merge blocks, and a brief section on floating objects. Alright, welcome everyone. Let's begin the final tutorial. Hey, faction! Yay! First three chambers are about reading and viewing. It is up to you to decode when to move on to the next chamber, or decide when to move on to the next chamber. Okay, that's where we start. Oh, lots of stuff. Small ship grid, large ship grid. There are three different types of grids. Small, large ship, and station. Large ship and small are the same size and can be merged with each other. You can also convert stations into large ships by accessing the info tab of the terminal when sitting in a flight or control seat on that station. And that's how you should actually go about building large ships. Make them a station first so they don't fly away. Uh, a, grip, a grid is a group of connected blocks. There's no limit to the amount of blocks in a grid. Terminals will display a control panel entry for every configurable block in a grid. Power from an energy source is supplied automatically to every block in the grid. So you can see a giant landing thing and a really small one. <laughs> Uh, station grids are by default aligned to the uniform orientation, so if you build two separate stations, it's possible to connect them by simply building blocks between them. You can select to rotate stations when you make a new one, press B when placing the first block, and you can rotate it as you would any other block. However, if you rotate a station, it will not be possible to connect it to another as described above. You'll need to use merge blocks. Okay. Small ship blocks. Yep, we've seen this. These kind of things, landing gear. Those things. And here are the larger versions. Small ship and large ship grid blocks vary in size, shape, and sometimes capacity. Some blocks are only available for small grids, and some only for large. The wall of blocks here shows a selection of blocks in both sizes. A red cross means there's no equivalent block for that capacity. So for this little Gatling gun thing, there's no nothing like that on a big ship. There's a giant... what is this? Assembler. You can't have those on a small ship. And But you can have both of these antennas. Cool. Oh, look at that big ship out there. Yeah, we're gonna go fly it. Alright. Doors. Alright. Different ships. Different ship sizes. Bivocator. Fighter. Small ship. Pretty cool. A miner. Small ship. That's quite the miner. A welder ship. These are all small ones. And a small tug, a manipulator. Oh, so it's got a landing here. You can go and connect on something and move stuff around. Very cool. And now out here. Foreground concussion, a missile forget large ship, and that farther one away is a carrier large ship. Very cool. So I guess we're not flying them, we're just seeing them. Alright, now we're gonna actually start doing stuff. Pick up grinder tools. The world option station voxel support means that stations will only remain static if one of the grid blocks is partially embedded in an asteroid. This station grid is supported by the asteroid material at its base. Cut through the two scaffold blocks to sever the connection 
and the part that floats free will become a large ship grid. Ah, cool. This top part up here. All right, scaffolding blocks. Grid. Okay. Uh, this sensor is set up to detect large ships. It will open the hangar doors when activated. Hey, look, it's open. Because we made it a large ship. Alright. Enter the flight seat and fly forwards to connect the merge blocks. When connected, the ship will become part of the station and you'll be able to use button 4 on the button panel to open the doors to the next chamber. Ah, got to fly this into here. So this is the merge block here. Looks like a giant power connector. The only way to connect separate grids permanently is to use merge blocks. If you merge a large ship with a station, it will become one larger station. Merging two large ships results in a bigger, single large ship. Small ships can only be merged with other small ship grids. Okay, so we'll come in here into the seat. Gotta get rid of that out of our hands. And T to enter the cockpit. There we go. We should be connected now. And now I can come over here and use this button. And it opens. And they're green, showing the connection. Awesome. Merge blocks can be disconnected by setting either half to off in their terminal control. Enter the cockpit of this ship and press 3 to detach the weld ship. Then use it to repair the button panel by the hangar doors which will allow you to exit. Alright. So 3, detach. Now we're detached from that merge block. Let's come back over here and turn on our welder repair thing, and that's done. And now I can hop out. Uh, basically, saying you cannot take the ship through here. This setup demonstrate a, demonstrates a way you can connect two pistons to one subgrid. Press button 2 to extend the pistons and connect the merge blocks. Press button 3 to retract them, then use the button panel on the blast door to open the hangers to proceed. Alright, so we're going to use button 2 to extend them. All the way up there. Alright, so they're connected. Piston and rotor subgrid information. When attempting to use merge blocks to connect to piston and rotor subgrids, good practice to build them on the side rather than directly on the rotor head so they can be deleted later. Simply build around connected merge blocks to reinforce the grid, then delete or grind the merge blocks themselves to leave you with the structure you want. You can Use merge blocks to connect grids. Yeah, okay. Rotors and pistons create subgrids for the objects attached to their respective heads. These subgrids will connect to the parent terminal so you can access and configure the subgrid. It's not currently possible to activate thrusters or wheels with the standard WASD flight drive controls if they're connected with subgrids. It's possible to connect two pistons or rotors to one subgrid. For example, when trying to create a more stable blast door, but even when they are lined up, blocks built from one subgrid to another will not attach. It requires merge blocks. You need to connect multiple subgrids with merge blocks, like connecting large ships or small grids. Alright. Track them. Then use the button panel on the blast door to proceed to the hangar. Now that they've connected and grabbed that stuff together, pulls it back down. 
I can get access to this. So that's what it's showing here, that it went up there, those merge blocks connected, made it one unit, and then I pulled it back down. Pretty cool. The sensor is supposed to detect falling, floating objects. Oh, that's what has been going that sound this whole time. Landing gear are also able to lock onto floating objects like components, lumps of ore, and ingots. The auto lock function for landing gear will help you lock onto items. Use button one on the panel to turn on auto lock, and it will lock onto the next item that comes down. Oh, nope. T. Boom, locked onto an object. When the landing gear is locked onto an object, use 4 to rotate it to the next sensor. When the sensor detects an object, it will allow me to proceed. Alright. Bring it close to this sensor over here. Ding! And the door is open. Cool. And that's it. Tutorial success. Well, there we go. Thank you guys for watching, appreciate everyone who's followed this tutorial series, and next you can look forward to seeing my survival series. Alright, everyone have a great day, and I'll see you all next time!